Now we're ready to hook up capacitors, multiple capacitors, in different configurations and see what happens when we connect it to a potential source, uh, in this case uh, VT. And this VT is just a battery or a cell. We'll talk about that more later, like I said. So let's think about what happens. Once this source is connected, positive charges are going to be attracted to the negative charges and they're going to flow up into the first capacitor and the positive charges on the other side of the plate of C1 are going to travel towards C2 and the positive charges on the right hand side of C2 are going to flow towards C3 and the positive charges on the right plate of C3 are then going to flow towards the negative source or negative charges. So it should make sense that only a certain amount of charge Q can move or collect onto this plate on the left hand side of C1 and Q charge has to leave the right plate and when it get the charge from C1 goes to C2 only Q amount can collect on the left plate of C2 and only Q amount of charge can leave the right plate of C2 and only Q amount of charge can collect on the plate left plate of C3 and only Q amount of charge can leave the right plate of C3 to go towards the negative charges. From this discussion we can see that the amount of charge out of the source is equal to the amount of charge on capacitor 1 is equal to the amount of charge on capacitor 2 is equal to the amount of charge on capacitor 3. Now as far as the potential we would need to be able to add the potentials up to get to a complete potential of VT. So if I represent the potential across capacitor 1 as V1, potential across capacitor 2 is V2, and the potential across capacitor 3 is V3, then because I have to be able to get a total of the, the potential across each of the three capacitors, I know that Vt is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. And now the question becomes, what is the total capacitance that is, I'll call it seen. Uh, another word is, uh, that can be put in is, uh, let's see, effects. The put seen or effects the uh, potential source VT. Because remember, these parts are stupid. They're dumb. All they know is what they see happening at their terminals. They don't, uh, the, the source VT doesn't know that there's three capacitors. It just sees the total effect of all three of those capacitors. 
and so it's going to see what it considers to be a lump capacitance connected to it and what we want to find is what is the capacitance across we're going to call that CT, the total capacitance. So let's start with some relationships that we should know. We have Q1 is equal to C1 V1. Q2 equals C2 V2. Q3 is equal to C3, V3, and the total charge, QT, is going to equal the total capacitance, what everything looks like, times the potential source. And I have this formula for the addition of all of the potentials of the capacitors equals the potential of the source and I can rearrange these equations to fit here so I'm going to have QT over CT is equal to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2 plus Q3 over C3. And now all the Q's are equal, so I can factor out all of the Q's, and I get 1 over CT is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And this can be extended to as many capacitors that are in series. So we say that the total capacitance of series connected capacitors is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocal of each capacitor. So the total capacitance is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals, which gets kind of fun to say, but it's a very easy relationship to remember. And we'll find this relationship uh, come back and uh, quite a bit. It's uh, very common when we talk about other circuits. So this is the formula for the capacitance, the total capacitance of series connected capacitors.